reaches underneath the truss structure in order to get access to the uh, PDGF on the MT. And there you can see it grappled to the MT, it releases the lab, and then we maneuver this station robotic arm into a position such that it can grapple P6 on the morning of flight day 6 or EVA 2. And now you get a great perspective on the P6 segment with the 2B and the 4B arrays to, uh, retracted. And you can see the SSRMS, the station arm, going for grapple on the grapple fixture near the base of P6. After that, we maneuver the, uh, the shuttle arm into position such that it provides a, a additional views of the P6 relocation. And we're putting the shuttle robotic arm in a position such that we can hand the P6 from the station arm uh, to the shuttle arm on flight day 7. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. There you see P6 uh, being disconnected from Z1, and I'll talk about the EVA tasks that lead up to that in a moment. And then we're bringing, using the station robotic arm to bring the P6 segment down to what we call the overnight park position. It's a position that uh, we can use to access the arm, and here you can see Wheelock and Wilson uh, doing some training on just this activity. Uh, using the uh, resources that we have in our simulators. But basically this, the overnight park position that I described is designed to provide a good thermal environment for P6, which is uh, clearly unpowered at this point, but also it's a position that is able to be, uh, that is within reach of the shuttle robotic arm since we need to hand it off on the next day. But I'll, I'll talk some more about